friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. And I've got a lot of news and catching up to do with you here. So uh, the first part of this video, the first few minutes, is just going to be a little bit of catching up, shop news, and different things. Uh, first thing on that jam video that we put out live the other night, uh, that went out on Tuesday night. Must have been July 3rd. You know, we had never done a, uh, a video live like that with a smartphone. Now, we did it with my tablet for Christmas, and it worked fine. So we thought, well, let's just, hey, you know, turn it on here while we're at the jam and see what happens. Well, it looked fine on the screen. Uh, we thought it was working. We figured the sound probably wouldn't be that good, and we, you know, figured there'd be pixelated, you know, because of the slower internet speed there. But anyway, bottom line is, it worked uh it just reversed the image i don't know why and everybody says you're left-handed well yeah i realize that but uh i can't do anything left-handed folks so let's just clear that up right now so if you see me left-handed in a video it's fake video it's uh fake news as trump would say so that's what happened there it, I don't know how to keep that from happening with a smartphone. I understand when you're using the monitor on the smartphone in the video, it will reverse it like that. That's what I've come to learn. And thanks for watching that video. A lot of you watched it. Some of you, about 1,200 of you, saw my PID help video. In other words, I had a temporary video out there and I was asking for help with the uh, temperature controller for the side bender, which is the, what this video is going to be about here in just a minute. But uh, that turned out to be a total false alarm, just complete dumbness on my part. Although I can't take total credit for being dumb on it because the instructions are pretty vague. The instructions go into great detail on all the depth of all of the menus d deep down in the menus, you know. And that's all it talks about. So I assume you had to go deep down in the menus to set the temperature. <laughs> because there was a high value and a low value. And I assumed that the low value was the low temperature and the high value was the high temperature. Well, it has nothing to do with temperature. It's got something to do with some kind of an alarm setting that you can set. And anyway, apparently you don't even need that. Bottom line is all you had to do was press the up arrow and the down arrow and that's all you had to do. So it was really dumb on my part, but you know, nowhere in the directions does it say to set the temperature, press the up arrow to make it warmer. You know, you know, it's logical now, but the, when you read the directions and you just, you're thinking in this complicated mode, you know, you don't think of that. And on top of that, it, in my defense, if you will, it was flashing all these goofy things, error messages and numbers and things. So I couldn't tell what, what was really going on. So anyway, once I figured it out, actually, I, uh, uh, someone recommended I call that George fellow that has the brewery. Uh, uh, anyway, he uh, puts out a lot of videos on this, and I had seen some of his videos. I'd seen quite a few of them, actually. And anyway, he was very helpful when I called him, and he's the one that straightened me out on that. There was a little interruption there, but anyway, uh, George was very helpful, and he's the one that straightened me out. Uh, all I had to do was push the up arrow and the down arrow and everything worked. And you'll see that in the video in there in a minute. Uh, we're going to go in the other room and bend a set of mandolin sides on that new bender. I'm telling you, I couldn't be more happy with that thing, the way it works. It is awesome. You'll see in a minute. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to mention that I ended up getting another new PC. I rebuilt my PC, oh, I don't know, eight or nine months ago, something like that and thought I was doing a pretty good job on rebuilding it. But, you know, I have, I'm not up on the new technology. You know, there's a lot to learn there that I just didn't know. And I bought the wrong processor, apparently. Apparently I bought one that was out of date, didn't even realize it. You know, a lot of things. So, and it was just that it was, wasn't as fast as I really still needed. It was a darn fast computer, but not as fast as I need for when you're making hour long videos and things like that. So I had a company in town build me a new computer and they did a bang up job. And I mean, this thing is so fast, it's just unbelievable. Of course, I paid for it, you know. <laughs> they didn't give it to me free. <laughs> but anyway, it worked out real good. I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to mention here at the beginning. And so now let's go in the other room and we'll see how we can bend a set of mandolin sides for you. This is the current state of the union here in terms of my side bender. 
It's not a whole lot different than the last time you saw it, except for the fact that I've added this box here, and you can see the controller on the front. But before I power it up and get it hot, I wanted to show you how I put it together. And, in, you know, just it might help somebody down the road. This is a uh, Inkbird 106 VH, and the number means that this one has the K thermocoupler, and from what I've read, that's kind of the best one to get, I think, especially for this application. And the, th the K thermocoupler comes with a threaded insert that you uh, can drill a hole, thread the hole, and then thread it up inside there. And that worked perfectly for this solid piece of aluminum that we have here. So let me show you how I did this. Uh, this this uh, box on the outside is just uh, red cedar that I cut right here on the farm. It's, uh, I milled it with my sawmill. This is a piece of uh, like plexiglass, I guess you'd say. It's, it's actually more like the white plastic cutting boards that you find in your kitchen. It's that real slick type white plastic. It's just something I had and I thought, well, that'll make a nice uh, you know, background for the uh, indicator. And you can see I put it up here. Now, sure, I could have put it under here. I could have put it through the top. I could have done a lot of things. But I thought about it carefully, and I wanted it right here, mainly because that's right in my eye line. Uh, you know, the sides are getting bent this way here and around here, so anything in this area could be in the way. But there's a lot of room here, and, you know, you don't need much room for a side. It's pretty thin. So, you know, you put your side in here, and you bend it this way, and you can see what's going on the whole time. So that's the reason I wanted it right there, and that's why I went to the trouble of building this extra box versus, you know, just mounting it someplace and sticking it on, on the table. Now, we'll turn this around and show you what's inside the box. And, first of all, you can see I even have a cover plate on it there. And we'll take that off. Okay, so the ports are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 11 and 12. So we're starting here at 1, it's empty. 2 is uh, not even got a port for it. Then 3 is the blue lead coming off of the K thermocoupler. Uh, 4 is the red lead coming off of the thermocoupler, and that's the only thing you have here, 3 and 4. So as long as you do that, you're going to be pretty much good to go on your thermocoupler. Then over here on this side, now I use these colors. These colors are not significant other than we'll go and see where they connect. So you could use any colors you really wanted to. This is just the colors wire that I had available at the moment when I was doing this. So the green wire here, and um, I can't remember if what that actually goes to now, but we've got green at the top, red, blue, and black. And the only way I can see those colors is I've got pretty much light shining on them right here in the studio, or in the shop. Uh, if, there were, if it was dimmer, I wouldn't be able to tell what color those are. But we got green, red, blue, and black. Everything goes through a hole right here in the bottom. It goes inside. And I'm going to leave it up to you to remember the colors here. So one, two, one, two three, four, five. So six is, is green, seven is blank, eight is red, nine is blue, 10 is black, and if you want to write those down for reference, you know, to help yourself wire one of these up. Okay, I know the lighting is not the best here for you, but I can tell you what's going on. The blue wire here is actually connected to the white wires out of your power cord and the power that goes to your heating element. So the blue wire is your, you, you could call it your neutral or, uh, you know, your common. Um, but anyway, so that's the blue, and that would go to your white wires in, in your normal power cord. My power cord just happened to have a uh, different color. It had, it had a blue wire, so I just went ahead and used the blue wire as, instead of white. So you could think of the blue as white in normal electric. The green that comes from the switch up here is not a ground. Normally green is ground, and it is over here on the power cords. And I know that's confusing, but I know how I wired it, so it's not confusing to me. But the green comes from the switch up here, as I mentioned earlier, and it comes to the negative port number four on the solid state module, SSR. So it comes to, so the green from the switch up here, as I mentioned before, 
goes to port number four. The red from the switch up here goes to port number three, which is the positive port. <clears throat> Over here, the hot wire uh, from the the hot wire from the heating element goes to port number two on the SSR, and the hot wire from the electric cord goes to port number one on the SSR. And then there's a black wire from that same port, port number one, that travels back up to the switch and connects to the port number 10, as I mentioned earlier. I believe that's all the connections of the actual wiring. Then the thermocoupler itself comes out of here and just loop, I just, it was real long, so I just looped it up in here, and then it goes up through the hole and back to the switch, like we mentioned before. I think that should explain it for you. If you have further questions, you can always ask them in comments. i just show you another point or two. Um, where I, I just cut a slot in here, but to keep the cord in that slot so it doesn't always get out of the slot, I just put another slotted piece of wood facing the other direction with a couple screws in it, so that keeps it in there. It's like a hole. That helps that. The rest of the wires have been coiled up and just and, and tied up with wire ties just to keep them out of the way so when you turn this down it, nothing gets sat on. And that's really about all there is to it. Hope you find that helpful. Now we'll see what it can do. Okay, I'm going to plug it in, but I wanted to zoom it in for you and you can see where we're looking here. We're going to zoom in on the meter itself and that way you can see what's going on when I plug it in. Okay, you can see it's already at 77 degrees. That would be the room temperature. And the 365 flashing number, which was the number that had confused me before, but it used to say 259, was just a stupid misunderstanding on my part. All I had to do, and I, it doesn't say this in the instructions anywhere, uh, all I would have had to do was just raise or lower the temperature with the up or down arrow. I, because of the way the instructions are structured, thought you had to go into menus to change the temperature and I thought you had to give it a range. So it was just a misunderstanding on my part about my problems I was having with this. It's actually very, very, very simple. You will have to go into the menus to do a few things if you choose to. One would be to set it to Fahrenheit like I did. You can see the temperature's climbing, 83.6, 83.7, it's going up. When I put an external thermometer on this, uh, it does match pretty closely to this. I mean within a few degrees. Most of the time it's within three degrees and some of the times it goes up to about eight or nine degrees difference. But I think that's because the PID uh, part of this is learning how to keep it at a certain temperature and it goes up and down and it goes past it sometimes and that kind of thing. But uh, make a long story short, it seems to work pretty well and it must be pretty darn accurate based on everything I've been able to do to test it. We're going to go ahead and let it warm up here, and then just for demonstration purposes, we're going to see how well we can bend a set of mandolin sides. I just thought I'd give you a little update. It's been exactly six minutes, and you can see the temperature there. It's up to 230 degrees. Well, that's Fahrenheit, by the way. I would switch it to Celsius for you. I know how to do it, but it's complicated. you got to go into menus and things, and it's just... If it was a one button deal, I'd push it for you and let you see it. Sorry, I don't have it in Celsius, but there you go. It's um, 238 now and it's only been about six minutes. So it heats up really fast. Well, maybe you can see that the temperature is at 362.3. I've got it set for 365. This out button is still on, which means that the power is going out to the element. And it's almost at 365. I'm assuming the out button is going to go off here very quickly. It did. It just went off at 365. The amount of time, it was, uh, let's see, uh, 15 minutes almost exactly from room temperature to the full temperature there. Well, off camera, I refined my technique a little bit. You can see this one's bending really good and it's, and it's uh, not cracking the wood at all. I'm just starting at the very end there and just very, working it very lightly around it and just kind of holding it there till I can kind of tell it's dry, about right there, and uh, just before it burns, you know. I really like it. It's really nice. 
compared to anything else I've done, this thing is awesome. And there you go, and it gets when it just about dries out, that's when I stop. And just I can hear it stop sizzling, and that's where we stop right there. So you can see how well that's doing. There's one needle tiny nick right there, but that's like nothing for this tight grain maple and you just you can just push that right back in place and glue it and nobody will ever know it and it's perfect it's just really nice i'm starting the bend uh, to come back now to the body after that scroll bend there and so i'm just trying this real here with the uh it's, i'm still using the aluminum strap there to bend it and i think it's going to work really good see there how it's coming back really nice really really nice now we can bend without the uh, I think we can bend the rest of it without the metal strap now because now we're just talking about bending the, the, the large bends around here Starting to look like a mandolin already. So that works really good there. Now we've got a we've got a mandolin pretty much bent up already right there. I'm gonna go ahead and bend the the other long side on the other side of the mandolin there and I'm just going to start by making the, the point up here Gonna be a pretty set of sides, a lot of a lot of figure in them. I'm gonna bend that last little. Well, actually, there's one more little tiny piece, but this little piece here uh, be up there by the neck on the uh, treble side. I think we're finished. <laughs> That's the easiest I've ever done this, I can tell you. And there's the finished sides. It was about 20 minutes tops from start to finish once I started actually bending the uh, sides. And I bet I could do that a lot faster now because I learned the technique on the first piece and you know I broke the first piece a little bit and so I just started over and uh, it worked really, really, really well. I am absolutely tickled with it. It couldn't be any better.